Hey Math 1B in Geometry, I've got a new video for you and it is the start of chapter 2. Now I was going to split Math 1B in Geometry into different directions, but I thought that Geometry you guys could really benefit from doing this before we dig into the Geometry coursework. I found that there's a lot of these applications in there, so it's best we cover it now. So the first thing uh, just to keep in mind is that test corrections need to be made before the test retake can occur can occur so you guys got about a week to do that set up before school or after school time for help if your current grade is like a D or an F and uh, yeah let's jump into the material so last chapter was all about how to deal with linear equations either graphing one of them two of them graphing an inequality of one graphing a system of inequality special cases left and right writing the linear equations we covered a lot of ground what I just want to do is ask you guys to consider what you would do if somebody said, let's graph y equals x plus 4 and 3x plus 2y equals 18. So here's what you do. You would, you'd first have your graph ready on this one. It starts at 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. You'd go up one, right one, or down one, left one as many times as possible. You'd graph your line, connect the dots. And you're left with that linear, you're, you're left with that line. The next one, you've got to get y by itself before graphing. So uh, I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. 0 plus 2y is 2y equals negative 3x plus 18. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. y equals negative 3 halves x plus 9. All right, so I don't have a starting point that I can see right now. But it's kind of like, I can imagine it's up here somewhere, right? Let's just pretend it's there. And then I can move down one, two, three. Now we're back into it, right two. So what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to use that point up there. I'm just going to say, here's a point on the graph. Let's find some more. Down one, two, three, right two. Down one, two, three, right two. And that'll do it. As you can see, that's not an exact guess. It should have been more or less right here. All right, so we can solve this linear system by graphing like we did last chapter. And your solution would be the intersection point right there as an ordered pair. It'd be over 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 2 comma 6 is the solution. What I'm going to explore today is how to do this entire process of finding the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate where two linear equations graph, where the, where the two graphs meet, the two lines, but not use graphing at all. So let's check that out. Actually, I'm going to use this first equation to kind of introduce the thing. So 2, 6 is my solution. Here's a different method. You guys remember solving equations back in the day, right? So here's kind of a little tangent off to the side here. So 3x plus 1 equals 7. You guys were asked to do that way back in, you know, Math 1A or Math 1 or whatever the case may be. Yeah, you subtract the 1 from both sides. You divide by 3. X equals 2. Okay? Basic equations. What some mathematicians did way back in the day was they said, yeah, we could solve it using a graph, 
but we could also solve it just using straight algebra because you've got two equations. Now the idea is if I can take out one of the variables from one of the equations and plug in an expression that only has x's from the other one, we can actually solve an equation that's kind of similar to this. So here's what substitution method looks like. Substitution basically states that the y that lives here is the exact same y value that's here. So what you do is you say, I'm going to totally rewrite 3x plus 2, but instead of putting a y there, I'm going to put a blank space. All right? And it equals 18. So 3x plus 2 times instead of y, I'm just going to put a blank spot in place of the y equals 18. Well, we know that y equals x plus 4. Yeah, if y equals x plus 4 in the first equation, then y equals x plus 4 in the second. So all I did was I said that y that was next to the 2 is now being replaced by the y equals x plus 4. Yeah, and now all we got to do is solve the equation like we did back in the Math 1A days. So the question is, do you know how to solve equations like this with just one variable? Well, the order of operations says that I need to multiply the 2 times the stuff in parentheses before I can add. So I'm taking 2 times x, and I'm getting 2x, and then I'm taking 2 times 4 to get plus 8. Yeah. The 3x drops down here. We're still adding, and then it equals 18. These two terms can be added to one another. And now it looks like the equation I just solved a couple minutes ago. I need to move this 8 to the other side, subtract it. I'm left with 5x plus 0 equals 10. And then you divide both sides by 5 because you're trying to get a 1x by itself. And it equals 2. So that's where this 2 comes from. Yeah, we know that x is the 2 coordinate for that solution where they meet. So how do we find the y value? Great question. We can plug that 2 now into the first equation we had up there. So you had y equals x plus 4. We have a better value for x. We have 2. So get rid of the x and plug a 2 in place of it. x equals 2. x is now 2. And 2 plus 4 is 6. OK? So that's the substitution method. Um, I'm going to go a little bit more deliberately with step-by-step -step methods on the first example so that you guys can see it with like fresh eyes. Because, yeah, we just graphed this, and this is maybe a little confusing right now. So, you know, I think that it's, it's pretty valuable to have more than one way to, to go about a task. So when you're, when you're told to solve a, a system of equations, we're adding just a new way of doing it. And you guys probably don't like it because we got in the groove of graphing and you're like, graphing was easy. I like that. This is something different. All right, so the first thing is, step one. I need to get either x or y by itself so I can plug into the other equation. So that's our first step. Get x or get y by itself. You're solving for x or solving for y. So you can pick either equation to work with. I'm going to pick the top one because it seems like it has the least amount of uh, moving parts. 1x plus 1y. So just to show you that you don't have to get y by itself, I'm going to get x by itself. So I'm choosing x for this first one. So subtract y, subtract y. x equals 
8 minus y. They're not like terms, so I can't actually, I can't call it 8y. It's 8 minus y, okay? So step one, complete. Get the x or the y by itself. It's just based on convenience. Which one's more convenient? I'm going to get this out of the way. We'll bring it back. Step two. This is where we say, take the x that exists in the second equation out of the mix. So I'm going to, you're going to, you're going to take 2x minus y equals 6, all right? And I'm going to, the thing I got by itself was the x. I'm going to get rid of the x right here and just replace it with big grouping symbols. So 2x is now two parentheses minus y equals 6. There you go. And what are we putting in the parentheses? We're putting in the 8 minus y. It was x, but x can be represented by 8 minus y. All right, distribute the 2. Solve the equation for y. So 2 times 8 is 16. 2 times negative y is minus 2y. I'm going to put a negative 1 in front of the y just to remind myself that, hey, that's a number. Equals 6. Now, I'm noticing that the 16 is a like term with the 6. They're separated by an equal sign, so I'm going to subtract the 16 from both sides. On the left, I need to take negative 2 minus 1 to get negative 3y. And then on the right side, I'm going to take 6 minus 16, which is negative 10. Use calculators to check your work so that you know, you're not making little, little tiny mistakes that follow you throughout the problem. And then our last move is going to be divide by negative 3. So we found y. y equals negative over negative is positive, a positive 10 thirds. And for now, I'm just going to leave it as 10 thirds, OK? 3, 6, 9, there's 3 and 1 third left over. It's 3 and a third, but maybe keeping it at 10 thirds is a good idea for now. So what was that step? We got x or y by itself. We plugged step 1 into our other equation. That's kind of the description. Plug step number 1 expression. That's this thing right here. into the other equation. So there's that explanation. There's this explanation. Now we found y. We need to find x. So we're going to mosey on over to this side again. Actually, let's just leave it. Here's the third step. The third step is I need to find x. And since we have y, I can use, I want to use the most convenient equation to get the value of x. So I'm basically looking for x equals. Look at this equation. This equation already has x equals. That's the ticket. So you do x equals 8 minus y. You're plugging in the 10 thirds you got there in for the y value. And then you just solve. So again, you guys are free to use a calculator. Um, I'm going to put 8 over 1. And subtracting fractions means find a common denominator. So 3 is the lucky number here. So multiply by 3 on both the bottom and the top. x would be 24 over 3 minus 10 over 3, which is 14 over 3. So x equals 14 thirds y equals 10 thirds. Together, they create step four, the ordered pair, 14 thirds comma 10 thirds. Yeah, so a description 
of step three and step four, maybe we could say, I, I plugged the answer I got from step two I plugged step number two answer into the equation from step number one. And then step four is basically write it as an ordered pair. Ordered pair is our final answer. All right, I'm going to stop this video, and then the next one will be just, uh, just examples of problems in which you see substitution method in action.